Hey, what's up everybody? See Dowson S here from The Mimic Method. And in this video, I wanna talk about what I identify as one of the main obstacles preventing people from learning foreign languages. And that is that their mind is stuck in word processing mode. And what you want to do is switch to sound processing. So in this video, I'll talk about what that means, how to know if you're a word processor and why it's a problem and how it's actually affecting your ability to speak, understand, and learn new things. And then finally talk about what you can do to fix that, to make that switch from being a word processor to a sound processor. So to begin, I want to start by showing these old manuscripts. If you Google the term scriptio continua, this is the term used to describe how manuscripts were written up and for a very, very long time. Um, as you can see, you look at some ancient script and there are no spaces in between the words. It's one continuous stream of letters, right? So this is what they call scriptio continua. And so you might have noticed this before. I know I noticed when I was a kid, I was like, yo, why don't they put spaces in between texts? It just makes it way harder to read. And as it turns out, it wasn't until the ninth century that scribes started to put spaces in between words to increase readability. But prior to that, it was always written like this, which makes you think, why? Isn't that obvious? Like, wouldn't that be an obvious thing to do to put spaces between words? But it's actually not that obvious. The more natural thing to do is the right, the way I just showed you, because written speech or written language is merely a reflection of spoken language. And spoken language doesn't have spaces in between words. When you speak, you have a continuous stream of sounds and the words flow and blend together. This is how we naturally speak. So it's only when we have this new literacy system where you put spaces in between words that we start to think of words and sentences in this way. And it has a profound effect on how we process and think about language. So when you were a child learning your first language, you were illiterate and all you had was you're just bathing your brain in the stream of sounds all around you and then you were mimicking those sounds and tapping into that stream and through that process you're able to perfectly learn your first language but then you learn how to read then you have this whole new kind of mental system in your head where you can like visualize things and for your first language it doesn't interfere because it's so deep and innate when you speak your first language you're not thinking about letters you're not thinking about spaces at all but if you learn a second language and you learn with conventional methods which rely on literacy, then you will learn to expect and experience that language in that spaced out word for word way. And this can be very problematic. This will make you what I call a word processor. So in our coaching, I always know when someone's a word processor in the very beginning because what I'll have them do is sit there with a native speaker and I'll ask them to mimic. And the speaker will give them a phrase. So maybe in Spanish, the phrase might be like, hola, como estas, right? And then the word processor will say, hola, como estas? Or the Spanish teacher or the French teacher says, uh, voulez-vous man voulez manger quelque chose? And they'll be like, voulez-vous manger quelque chose? So what's happening? I'm telling them to mimic, which is to say, this person is producing a bunch of sounds and movements. I want you to do those same sound and movements the same way that she did. That's what mimicking is. But that's not what the person did. What happened was the person heard those sounds, they were able to discern what the words were, and then they processed those words and then reproduced their own reading of those words. So, hola, como estas? turns into, hola, como estas? You see the difference? So that's word processing. And word processing is a major problem. If you have this problem, which most people do, especially if you've trained in a conventional way, it's a major problem, why? Well, there's three things we care about, our ability to speak, our ability to understand, and our ability to learn new things. And word processing prevents and inhibits all of these things, starting with speech. If you can, you can also tell a word processor by how they speak. If they speak like this and every word is separated like this, then that means they are probably a word processor, right? 
And so they don't have like the phrases that kind of run and flow together. Whereas sound processors will take things in and kind of rattle it off and flow. In fact, I remember when I learned Brazilian Portuguese the first time and I was doing it the right way. I didn't learn how to read and write at all before I learned how to become conversationally fluent. And I remember in particularly, there's a phrase which is like, hey, how are you doing? And people will kind of say it kind of colloquially, like, hey, hey, como é que tá? And I say, hey, como é que tá? And I hear people say, como é que tá? And then because I'm mimicking, I just observe, oh, okay, como é que tá? So that's what you say to people when you ask them, how are you? Ah, como é que tá? I tô bom. Right? And so I, I mimic that sequence of sounds. Como é que tá? Como é que tá? And one day, I kind of, after I became already conversationally fluent, I'm like, okay, let me finally sit down, open a Portuguese book, and look at these things. And then I kept seeing this phrase that was spelled like C-O-M-O-O-Q-U-E, como o que está? And I was like, huh, I never heard anyone say that before. And I'm like, Oop. And I kept seeing it, and I'm like, I don't know anyone who talks this way. Like, what is this phrase? And then one day, it just kind of clicked. I was like, oh, whenever I say como é que está, I'm actually saying como o que está? But because it's colloquial, they all blend together into like a como é que está? Right? So for me, como é que está was just like a word. But it turned out it was like five words that were blended together. So this experience is common to people who are learning in a natural, organic, mimicry way because you're not really dealing with words. You're dealing with words, but more fundamentally, you're dealing with sounds and meanings and context. That's really what language is. At this intermediary stage of like written words with spaces in between, it can be useful, but it can also be quite harmful. And you see this the most when it comes to listening comprehension. So word processors, they can have a massive vocabulary, know all the grammar, be able to speak fluently. It might be jilted and not smooth, but they can speak, produce sentences, be understood by people. But then when native speakers speak to them and they speak in that flowy, continuous speech, they're like completely lost because they've trained themselves through the written word to expect to see every word spaced out clearly and completely articulated. But in fact, real life, that's not how it goes. Everything flows together. It blends together. Words get chopped. So word processors are, are imposing this very kind of structured word-for-word -word reality on their listening. And then what you hear is based on what you're expecting to hear. So if I'm expecting to hear spaces and there's no spaces, I'm going to be forever lost. All right. So if you had this problem, you're someone who's been studying your language for a while and you know a lot of words, but you can't understand people and you kind of get stuck in this space of like grabbing for nothing, this is the problem, you're a word processor. And what you want to do is make the switch to being a sound processor. So sound processors, here's how you can train that. So we sit down with your practice partner and you have them say phrases to you, like I said, like, oh, hola, como esta? Uh, hola, como estas? And then you mimic that exactly how you hear it. Hola, como estas? Hola, como estas? But you might not get it exactly, the articulation, the content, and all that kind of stuff. So what you can do to start is just first mimic the melody. Hola, como estas? <laughs> also mimic the, face, mimic the facial expression and the body expression. Hola, como estas? <laughs> right? That's the foundation, the melody. Then next level I have them is kind of mimic in a kind of slurry kind of way, like someone, you know, injected Novocaine into your mouth. Hola, como estas? Hola, como estas? Hola, como estas? All right, in fact, I want to show you that real quick with um, a language that I don't know anything about, Turkish. Let's see this guy. If I put this on a bit of a slower speed so I can grab onto it. And I can do melody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's sound processing. I'm just taking sounds and putting it back out there. I'm not, I don't know what the words are or care about the words yet, right? But I can look here and see the words in this transcript here. And if I try to follow along with what this girl just said. <laughs> right, so I'm just like, I can't fully, rec I can see how these vowels here, but... You know, I would never spell it this way off my first intuition. I don't see how this kind of perfectly lines up. I'm sure if I study the language, it'll all make sense. But in the beginning, you see how just looking at the written word will mess me up, 
right? These spaces. I don't hear a space here. Anime zimezimeta. I don't hear an anime zimezimeta. Severum, I just hear a anime sume sumeta and it comes together. Uh use me severum basket. Right. Moina me severum. Moina me severum. Right. Like moina me severum. Oh here it is. Moina me Yeah, like I have no idea, right? So this if I try to if I'm if I'm listening for this, I'm waiting to hear oh uh basketball Oina mai severim, masa tenisindamin, oslanarimim, right? Yeah, so that's not exact, nothing like I would have expected. But that's the problem. If I learn by reading, I'll be expecting this, looking for this, and I won't find it, and I'll be lost. Okay, so this is the problem of word processing. So you practice that sound processing kind of way, echoing, and then. What we just did was echoing, where a person will give you something and then you repeat after it. The main thing I trained, and now I'm switching up our methodology to have this at the very first module, is learning how to shadow speech in a, shadowing the, the melody of speech, shadowing in that kind of slurry way, which is basically where you're trailing behind continuously while the person's talking, so it sounds like this in your head. Right, so it requires a certain kind of skill you can train very quickly, but when you're doing both listening and shadowing at the same time. And what this does is it rewires your brain to stop being a word processor and to kind of lock in and zone in on the sound and the continuous flow of sound. And now you're plugged into the actual language. Now things can start to do their magic on you. I mentioned that word processing inhibits speaking and listening and learning because you want to be able to learn new expressions intuitively just by observing native speakers while they speak. And that's only possible if you're a sound processor. If you're a word processor, you will not learn any new thing until you see it written down in a word format you can understand. But if you're a sound processor, then you can observe things and then notice things people say and then mimic it and use it yourself. A lot of things will start to correct your grammar and seed new expressions in your unconscious mind while you're taking it all in and it's kind of flow out of you one day, you know where it comes from. So this really is the beginning of everything. You need to, if I use the metaphor of like a technology, you need to first plug in to the language. So you have like the language, like a module, and then you need to plug your brain into it to get the information, to get the data, right? But you need to have the right cable. Sound processing is the right cable. It fits in there like a glove. Ding. Once you fit in, then you can get the downloads. But if you're a word processor, you're trying to put like a, you know, a USB, a USB input into like the iPhone receiver, right? And it's like, oh, this is not working. It's not fitting. I'm not getting any information download because you don't have the right fit. You're, you're, you're mismatched, okay? So hopefully that's a bit clear now. If you're a word processor, worry not. We'll be putting out more content in the future to help people with that. We're also gonna be redoing and relaunching our coaching program. So if you wanna work with us directly to work on these things, then let us know. I'll be putting out more videos on, this, on these different subjects as well. So if you enjoyed this one, like it, subscribe, leave a comment, and then I'll see you next time.